Hi, how are you doing today? Today I would like to talk to you about how positive is not always good and how you have donors and stealers running around in your body at the moment and to talk to you briefly about how your body is indeed electricity and that's where the positive and negative comes into today. Um, so how does your body make electricity and how does it use it? Well, first of all, without electricity, you wouldn't be listening to me right now or watching me or reading the slide in front of you. Um, everything we do is controlled and enabled by electrical signals running through our bodies. As we learn in, in physics, um, everything is made up of atoms and atoms are made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Protons are positively charged, neutrons are n neutral and electrons have a positive charge. So let's talk about um, synapses firing and that's an awfully big word basically I just want you to know that um, when these charges are out of balance an atom becomes either positive or negatively charged. Um, the switch between one type of charge and the other allows electrons to flow from one atom to another. Uh, this flow of electrons or a negative charge is what we call electricity. Since our bodies are a huge mass of atoms, we can generate electricity. When we talk about the nervous system sending signals to the brain or synapses firing or the brain telling our hands to contract around a door handle or kick a ball or whatever it is that you're doing, um, it's talking about electricity carrying messages from point A to point B. Okay, starting point. Uh, right now, any cell in your body that is not actively sending messages to your brain or anywhere else in your body are slightly negatively charged. Uh, negativity is the neutral resting state of all of your cells. It's related to a slight imbalance between potassium and sodium ions inside and outside the cells. And um, at a different video, I will be talking about um, more into detail about that one. But this imbalance sets the stage for your electrical capacity. Um, and everything relies on these electrical sig signals. Since everything relies on these electrical signals, any breakdown in your body's electrical system is a problem, needless to say. Uh, when you get an electrical shock, that interrupts, you know, don't be sticking your finger in an outlet, right? Because that interrupts the normal operation of the system sort of like a power surge. A shock at the lightning level can cause your body to stop. The electrical process doesn't work anymore. It gets fried. So there are less dramatic problems like um, a node misfire that causes a heart palpitation, which means an extra heartbeat, or a lack of blood flow to the heart that upsets the pacemaker and causes other parts of the heart to start um, sending out different impulses. If the heart is constantly being told to contract, it never gets its full contraction and it can't get enough blood to the rest of the body, leading to oxygen deprivation, which is extremely important, and a possible heart attack or a stroke. Uh, next, I'd like to talk to you about um, uh, the pH. And pH is a big buzzword these days. Um, and I wanted to talk to you about it a little tiny bit differently today, but first of all, what is pH? pH stands for potential hydrogen, and it is a way of talking about the amount of acid and base in our bodies. It is also a way of talking about the amount of voltage in our body, which is not what you hear about regularly. pH is measured as a logarithmic scale where 0 is the most acidic and 14 is the most alkaline. 7 is considered neutral. The pH scale goes from 0 to 14 and is logarithmic, which means that each step is 10 times to the previous. So, in other words, a pH of 4.5 is 10 times more acid than 5.5, 100 times more acid than 6.5, and 1,000 times more acid than 7.5. Okay, however, pH is also a measure of voltage. A pH of 0 is the same as a positive 4,000 millivolts. A pH of 14 is the same as a negative 4,000 millivolts. So cells normally operate at about 
a pH of 7.2 or negative 22 millivolts. Chronic disease and pain are almost always associated with an acidic pH level which is also associated with an acidic pH which is the same as saying that chronic disease and pain are almost always associated with a loss of voltage. Health is associate, associated with the presence of voltage which is the same as saying that healthy people have an alkaline pH. In the body being able to hold the charge of voltage is associated with minerals in general and particularly calcium. Next the slide is extremely important and I want to take a moment I want you to really look at this. Um, this is a cellular pH or voltage and how it relates to disease. If you notice there, 7.365 is where you want to be, where our body, our blood stays at 7.365. That is our body's pH balance. When you start dropping below that, when you start getting into the six and five uh, is horrible. When you start getting into the six, this is where illness and disease starts kicking in. You can see just right there um, the 7.26 down to the 7.0. This is when you start getting tired. Um, illness and fatigue sets in. When you drop below that, this is where cancer kicks in. Okay, so. Um, you can see the cell voltage at 25 is where your cancer cells wake up and start taking over. Everybody's got cancer cells in them. However, um, this is when they become active and they can start taking over. Um, you also notice that there's a big place there where the pain starts showing up. Um, these is your body's warning signs that something is not right. When you start going up the scale, which means your pH level is getting higher. You're going towards the alkaline side, which is good. Your cell voltage has changed to the negative end. And this is where uh, healing and cancer cells actually start dying at 7.8. Uh, so that is very, very cool news. So I wanted to make sure you looked at that. It's in one, one way very scary and another way very, very exciting. So let's move on here and let's just assume that um, you have uh, a problem with your gallbladder. Okay, let's assume that you have low voltage in, a, in your gallbladder. Uh, this means that your gallbladder will hurt, will have a de decrease in your metabolism, you'll have decreased oxygen and insufficient metabolism. And you will also have other bugs, so to speak, that will be um, lunching on your gallbladder. It's going to be causing you pain. Um, and letting you know that things aren't going right, okay? Um, the toxins produced by these bugs can enter the bloodstream and cause brain damage. It's not just affecting your gallbladder, it is actually getting into the rest of your body too. You're just noticing in your, in your gallbladder. So you may have infections in your large intestines, your sinuses, or other places that are causing damage and creating an autoimmune problem. Um, however, it is simply bugs having lunch because your voltage is too low and your oxygen level is low. So I want to focus back on the importance of that pH. Um, pH is shorthand once again for potential hydrogen and is really a measure of voltage. When electrons are running through a conductor like a copper, pyre, pot, copper wire, they are there or they are not there. If you switch your switch on, you have an electrical uh, electron donor. If the switch is off, there are no electrons. Um, however, I want to put it to you a different way for you to remember that um, if it is a negative and is a donor, they put a negative sign in front of it. In other words, if it's a giver, it's a donor, okay, then it's got a negative in front of it. If it is a stealer or a taker, they put a positive sign in front of the voltage. So there again, the negative is better. Positive is bad, negative is good. Okay, now we're going to go to the next chart again that will help you understand the difference between electron donors and stealers or givers and takers um, in the human body. So you can see here again um, that our body is at 7.365. Okay, that's a pH balance. Okay or negative 22 
um, on the voltage scale. So you can see here that when you are at um, the higher end of the negative side of the voltage, the higher that number goes, the better it is, and also the higher the pH goes. So cancer readmission is at 8.55 or negative 650 volts um, at 7.88 pH. That's where your body makes new cells or negative 50 voltage. Okay. Um, kids, you can see, are stand a little bit higher up there than we do. Okay. If you notice, they buzz around. They have more energy than we do as adults. Um, when you're an adult, there again, we're at 7.365. 5 and negative 22 is where our voltage usually is. Um, when you start dropping below that, you start getting tired. Your voltage drops. Okay, you're lacking energy. You need you need a recharge. Okay, um, when you get below that, you're sick. Uh, at 7.0 is when things start taking a, a serious nosedive. You can see there that. At um, 6.83 in acidity, you're no longer alkaline, you're now acidic. Okay, that's where obesity comes in, and you are lo no longer on that negative voltage. You are now at the positive voltage. You're more tired. Okay, once again, your your energy is down. Your voltage is down. Okay, at 6.48 in acidic, that's when cancer wakes up. At the positive 30 voltage um, and then you'll see reverse osmosis what when I hit reverse osmosis okay that is put in there because reverse osmosis water people think oh I have a reverse osmosis osmosis filter system on my water that's a good thing well did you know that the pH balance a reverse osmosis water if is at a 4.0 it's highly acidic and its voltage is at plus 500 so it is dead water okay soda soda is highly 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 acidic it would take you days and days and days to get your body back up to the proper pH off of just drinking one soda it is highly acidic um, it takes like 36 glasses of water to combat um, that one glass of soda which is more glasses of water than anyone can drink so as you can see the voltage on a soda is a positive 700 okay um, and it's exodus as pH balance is acidic rate there we go is 2.5 okay now we're gonna switch gears just a little bit and let's just take a look at your thumb okay your thumb if there's nothing wrong with it okay is running at a voltage of negative 2.5 once again if you flip over to that other um, page you'll remember that negative 2 point negative 25 or negative 22 is where your body is running where it's supposed to be your thumb is pink it feels fine it works well okay now hit your <laughs> hit your thumb with a hammer okay now all of a sudden your thumb is red it's swollen it's swollen it's hot it's pulsating with pain okay it has automatically gone up to negative 50 which you may think oh hey ooh, that's cool well no it goes up to the negative 50 because this is what it, is necessary to make new cells and to replace the ones that you just damaged okay so what's going to happen is blood vessels um, dilate and dump raw materials such as protein carbohydrates fats vitamins minerals etc into your thumb okay to fix it and you need these raw materials to build new new cells in your thumb that you just ruined okay you also need negative 500 millivolts to have the energy to turn these raw materials into those new cells. Okay, it's got to work hard to be able to do that. As soon as I make enough cells to replace the ones I damaged by hitting my thumb, it's going to go back down to you. That your thumb is going to go back down to the negative 25 millivolts. Okay, it's back to normal and everything's good. Okay, so as you can see once again, that chronic disease is always defined as having low voltage okay you're out of juice you don't have enough juice to take care of yourself to to heal yourself okay one cannot address chronic disease unless one can insert enough electrons to achieve that negative 500 millivolts 
Okay, one must also have the raw materials necessary to make new cells and to eliminate the toxins or infections that are present and that will damage the new cells. Okay, um, you can take all the medications and have all the surgery you want, but if you think about it, uh, you taking that aspirin or you taking that over-the-counter drug, you taking that prescription your doctor gave you, ask yourself, is it making your body more alkaline? No. Is it giving your body more oxygen? Uh, no. Is it giving your body more voltage? Is it giving your body the energy that it needs? No. Okay, so once again, um, you need and you will not heal unless you have negative 500 millivolts raw materials okay means your body's got the stuff in it that it needs to make those raw materials and a lack of toxins which if you want to learn more about getting toxins out of your system I highly highly recommend it check my other videos below um, so here we go once you begin to understand that chronic disease and healing are controlled by voltage one must ask the following questions. How do cells normally get voltage? How do cells store voltage? Why did my voltage drop enough to allow me to get sick? How do I measure the volta voltage of organs? What do I do when I find the voltage is low? So ask yourself these questions and if you would like the answers to them, check out the video below uh, to your health and wellness. God bless you. Have an awesome day.